Hello and welcome again to now the third episode of Sam's 10 Minute Tuesdays, which Joe Templin and I created because sales is an activity game and introductions make it an easy game to win every day. So Joe, thanks again for joining us. I love to uh, love to have you on this call. And you know, it's funny. I I just for the audience to know, Joe and I were just talking about activity management, and sometimes Joe is on a roll, and I I get excited about it, even though I I kind of pioneered the industry, not not the concept, but the, at least we we named it. Uh, 1995, we we that's when we realized you can't manage time, only activity, and we and we thought, what kind of activities? Sales activities made perfect sense for this industry. But it's been great to get to know people and learn from people like Joe Templin uh, on uh, on what why he likes activity management so much and what it's done for him. And it's funny that you know you started the company in 1995 because that's when I signed my college internship contract and came into the industry. And you know my old blue books and my green books and my Sam book and on the phone that has just made me who I am because I am such a wonderful salesman on my own. Nah, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm not beautiful. I don't have the great skill set. You know, I can't naturally influence people to get what I want and, you know, make friends. I'm just me. But having the SAM system allowed me to look at the areas that I needed to improve and then through effort on those specific areas, get better on them, which then changed my ratios and allowed me to then attack other areas of my short hauls and have that consistent mindset of improvement because I was able to get the feedback from keeping the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it reminds me how I, uh, when I first got in the business, I worked for uh, an insurance company and and I was I was uh, taken under the arm of, actually the second second company I actually worked for, Taken on the arm of a more seasoned guy, he was just dressed to the nines, drove the Eldorado, sported the Rolex, wearing the Armani suits, and and he, he was very, by all standards, he was all very successful. And they they had me ride with him, and I can still remember where I was. I was in in on in, on Ogden Avenue in Naper, Naperville, Illinois, when he told me, and he gave me a little bit of a zing, a slam, uh, because he knows that I wasn't I wasn't a natural salesman. And uh, he had all the all the uh, all the the, the, zing, the not the zingers, but the he's able to to persuade and and present in ways that I couldn't. And he said, you know, making just remember, salesmen are born; they're not made. I still remember the day that he told me that because it, it hurt, but it was also gave me the motivation to prove him wrong. And I thought that's just not true. I said, you're just because you're not you know naturally gifted of a talker, persuader, and you got all the, the pizzazz and, and sport and a Rolex, doesn't mean you cannot be successful, you cannot develop your skills to become a salesperson. Yep. And and, uh, and and I I thought, well, what do I do well? What could other people benefit from? And I thought, well, I'm, I'm a great salesman. Well, I'm really not, as I mentioned, but what do I do well? I manage my activities well. What kind of activities? My sales activities. Voila, we have the name of a company. From there, I bought you know, salesactivitymanager.com, activitymanager.com, and we're out to the races. This is at the, this is like 15, 20 years after that day. But it was all that motivation from him telling me salesmen are born, not made, that really gave me the motivation uh, to go ahead and, and and take this empowering concept to the world and help them become very successful. And that's like saying that, you know, baseball players are born, not made, or football players, or, you know, concert cellists. Some people might have more natural talent, but it's the individual who's going to put forth the consistent effort to improve that is ultimately going to win. You know, there's an old saying in martial arts, the master has failed more times than the novice has even attempted. Good okay. line. It is, you know, activity management allows you to financially engineer your business because if you know your ratio is 10-3-1, guess what? You run more tens through your system, you're going to get more ones out on the other side. If you just run more activity and track it so that you can then tweak what you're doing along the way, you're going to get more sales on the far side. And so understanding that it's 10, 3, 1 or 8, 3, 2, whatever your ratios are, understanding that and then maximizing what you're putting through the front 
is going to yield what you need and want out the back. And then you can tweak it to make it more efficient, you know, basically the engineering process design, you know, sales skill development, however you want to call it. But understanding those ratios and getting enough raw material to go through your process, that ultimately is going to determine whether you've got the gold Rolex and the nice car and the nice house and make MDRT or core of the table or top of the table, or if you're out of the business. Because I've seen incredibly talented sales individuals fail out because they weren't doing enough. They weren't running the process. They were winging it as opposed to being process driven. And when I first started in the uh, profession, there were 11 people in my training class. Every single one of them was a better salesperson than I was. Every single one had a better market. Every single one was more talented. But I outworked every single one of them, every last one of them. So the, we started with 11. At the end of six months, we were down to six. Instead of being number 11 out of 11, I was number four out of six. By the time we reached one year, we were down to four of us. I was the number one out of the group. And by the end of the second year, we still had four. And I was outproducing all the others combined. Was it because I'm smarter? Maybe, but it was because I was smart enough to realize I don't know everything. I'm gonna steal ideas from everybody else. I'm gonna outwork everybody else. I was told you need to see 15 people every single week to be successful. So being smart enough to say, hmm, numbers work. If I see 20 each week, then I'm gonna be more successful. I'm gonna have more money and there's going to be the occasional week because I can't control what everybody else does. I can just control how many appointments I make and what I do. Some weeks, I'm not going to be able to keep 20. I'll have a lousy week and I'll only keep 12. Or I'm going to take a day off and you know, so I won't see as many people. But if I strive to see 20 and manage my activity and track it and improve, I'm going to succeed. I thank Mark Fine for teaching me that idea of yeah. instead of the threshold of 15 that you barely step over that's the minimum and you shoot for 20 and if you're shooting for that all the time even if you fall short you're still going to exceed the minimum threshold and you're going to succeed overall and just having yeah. that mindset of i'm going to outwork everybody allows you to do the things that they can't do down the road yeah, I, I get it. I get it. It reminds me of one of your other lines about, you know, if I don't pick up the phone, I don't get to do what I love. So you do the activities that you necessar are necessary to do the things you love most. Yep. Uh, and and uh, you do what's necessary. Or I remember it was Mike White, a former president of Gamma and a managing partner out, out, out east. Uh, he had, at one of his meetings, he, I heard him say that most agents don't fail because what they don't know, they fail because what they don't do. And it no. made perfect sense. Uh, it What's the old saying from the MDRT meeting? Successful people do what unsuccessful people can't or are unwilling to do? Well, actually, that's a common denominator of success by Dr. Albert Ian e. Gray. That's who and it is. Uh, Thank you. Yep. Successful people form the habit of doing things that failures don't like to do. Uh, one of the best speeches, one of the best uh, uh, motivational speeches out there. Uh, it's maybe you know, 60, 70, 80 years old, but I'll tell you, just, just through today. And uh, one thing I'd like to uh, close on uh, is that uh, what happened with the guy that told me that, and ironically, we try to learn from always the best coaches and best mentors, but sometimes it's the worst ones that push you to do your best. Mm -hmm. In this case, I... I made sure that I set goals and kept score unknowingly of how many sales and service calls I made every day. Uh, and I just worked my, my tail off. Uh, and a year and a half, year, year and a half later, he was gone. Uh, I had a, a good block of business and ended up inheriting some of his business because <laughs> he didn't have the discipline to keep it up. And that's what I like about systems. That's what I love about activity management, which by the way, uh, we'll share, I'll share with the pledge next time, next time, but, Activity management is built on American ideals. Uh, it's and it's the personal responsibility, taking responsibility for your actions and your results, uh, and freedom. Activity management gives you the freedom to to achieve any goal that you want. Joe, thanks again for joining us, and I'm remind everybody again that uh, this is a, the Sam's 10 Minute Tuesdays. That sales is an activity game, and in introductions make it easy to win the game every day.
Take care and God bless.